X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X-Play, our week-long onslaught of Super Smash Bros. Brawl continues with an exclusive can't-miss preview. Then we review Lost Odyssey, the new epic role-playing game from the legendary creator of the Final Fantasy series. Plus, we go on location for an inside look at the jungle-themed party fighter Hail to the Chim. Get ready for some monkey business. It's game time. Welcome to X-Play, the center of the gaming universe. I'm Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. We're coming to you from the G4 studios in Los Angeles on Wednesday, February 6th. On today's show, the Super Slam Fest continues with an exclusive preview of the American version of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Then, Kristen Holt is in the studio for an uncharted sheet that will have you knee-deep in treasure in no time. All right, throw out your epic poem. Homer's got nothing on Sakaguchi. We review the Game Master's latest, Lost Odyssey. Plus, we ready our best, is that a banana in your pocket joke, and go on location to check out Hail to the Chimp. But first, let's go over to Morgan, who's got all of the day's news in our gaming update. Thanks, Adam. Rockstar Games has responded to rumors regarding the cancellation of a Grand Theft Auto movie. Yesterday, industry trade paper Variety wrote that interviews and articles were being prepped by the media when the film was unexpectedly canceled. New information from Rockstar VP Dan Hauser confirmed that while they had been approached by film producers, Rockstar has no interest and had no involvement with a GTA movie. BioWare has just announced new downloadable content for their Xbox 360 title, Mass Effect. The pack will be called Bring Down the Sky and is scheduled to hit the Xbox Live Marketplace on March 10th. The pack will cost 400 Microsoft points and will include a new planet and a new alien race called the Batarians. BioWare says the new content will add 90 minutes of content and gamers can earn one new achievement worth 50 gamer score points. New Mario Kart Wii details have popped up in the latest issue of Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu. The game will include 32 new tracks, 16 of those will be completely new and the other 16 will be remakes of old courses. Wii owners will be pleased to know they can play as their own me characters and even go online via Wi-Fi for 12 player multiplayer racing. The game will also add a new Mario Kart channel to the Wii's home menu. THQ has confirmed the existence of Red Faction 3. The game is being developed by Volition Studios for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC, and is expected to be released sometime between April of 2008 and March of 2009. In other sequel news, a title called Lost Planet Colonies, which is believed to be the next game in Capcom's snowy franchise, was recently rated T for Teen by the ESRB. Further details on this upcoming game are expected to pop up at this year's GDC or at Capcom's Gamers Day later this year. That is all for today's gaming update. Just a reminder to all of you gaming professionals, we know you're watching the show, please. If you've got any insider gaming news, be sure to email xplay at g4tv.com with your tips. Or, you know, if you're too lazy, you can visit the news section of our website and click on the tips button. That's much easier. But now let's go over to Adam, who's ready to talk RPGs. Thank you, Morgan. Well, Hironobu Sakaguchi first gained gaming notoriety by developing the Final Fantasy series, but he's back with an RPG of epic proportions called Lost Odyssey. But before we give you our review of the game, here's a look at the man behind the magic. Back in 1987, Hironobu Sakaguchi created what he believed would be his last video game for his floundering company, Square. And as such, he named it Final Fantasy. It was a breakout hit. And 20 years, 12 games, and innumerable spin-offs later, Sakaguchi's name is a household word. Well, in gaming households. The success of Final Fantasy kept him tied to the series for most of the first six installments. As the technology improved and the storytelling evolved, Sakaguchi was looked to for guidance not just on the Final Fantasy game, but on all of Square's titles. After Final Fantasy VI, Sakaguchi took a more supervisory role and ushered in the modern era of RPGs as the lead producer and scenario designer of 1997's Final Fantasy VII. As an executive producer, Sakaguchi's name would be tied to a veritable honor roll of important Square titles throughout the PlayStation era. 
Around the same time, Sakaguchi tried his hand at film directing, resulting in the tremendous box office bomb, Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. The years following would bring continued gaming successes, but Sakaguchi stepped down from his position at Square in 2004 to start Mistwalker, a new company. Mistwalker has so far distinguished itself with the 360 exclusive Blue Dragon, one of the few titles to make headway for the 360 in Japan. With numerous future projects in the works, Sakaguchi hopes to capitalize on his status as the man of an RPG empire. The protagonist of Lost Odyssey has lived for 1,000 years, but is this four-disc epic worth copious amounts of a mortal's precious time? Here is our review of Lost Odyssey. You are an immortal warrior. Imagine your power. You fight your way through history's great battles and emerge unscathed. You forge relationships with the most powerful figures of the ages. And you're the team captain for the neighborhood soccer team, or as the locals call it, football. Goal! <laughs> Lost Odyssey is finally here, providing some much needed RPG love for the Xbox 360. You follow Kaim Arganar, a warrior that you first meet in an epic battle on a lava-strewn plain. Hmm, massive armies? Giant battle, heroic fighter named. Hey, what was that name again? Oh, yeah, I knew that sounded familiar. Made immortal by his commander, Kaim helps turn the tide of war at the cost of his memories. As an undying warrior, you'll outfight, out explore, and generally outlive everyone else you come across as you search through the ages for clues to your past. Cutscenes provide everything from action to intrigue. To romance. Thank you, my lovely. <laughs> the acting in Lost Odyssey can get a little too close to caricature, even as the story veers to pretentiousness. But so does There Will Be Blood, and damn it, if loving Daniel Day Lewis is wrong, I don't want to be right. The actual gameplay, though, doesn't aspire to be much more than run of the mill. Turn based combat hasn't really evolved in the past 20 years, and that's part of the problem here. Even with shiny new high def graphics and incredible surround sound, you just can't escape the fact that you've done this all before. Cycling through allies, cycling through spells, cycling through enemies. Man, this is getting old real quick. Another problem is the length. You're getting a lot of game here, 40 to 50 hours worth. But there's no escaping the feeling that a lot of the time, you're just running around doing menial tasks to justify the four discs worth of material. Lost Odyssey is a good example of a classic turn-based RPG that just doesn't take any chances. As a fresh offering from a legendary designer, maybe we were simply expecting too much. Lost Odyssey gets a three out of five. You're dismissed. Coming up on X-Play, today's cheat will help you discover some of Uncharted's most elusive treasures. Then we go on location to monkey around with Gamecock's latest party fighter, Hail to the Chimp. Plus, we'll have an exclusive hard-hitting preview of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. You won't see it anywhere else. Stick around. Introducing Lean Pockets with a Whole Grain Crust in seven varieties. Welcome back to X-Play. Now, you might have sunk the El Dorado statue and finished Uncharted Drake's Fortune, but how are your achievements, I mean, I'm sorry, reward points coming along? Well, if you're lacking in treasure tracking prowess, Kristen Holt is here to help with today's cheat. Thanks, Morgan. In Uncharted, you take on the role of treasure hunter Nathan Drake. Now, if hunting treasure were easy, everyone would do it. In today's cheat, we give you a little help with your archeological accomplishments. If you're jonesing for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull to come out next Memorial Day, you can get your archaeological adventure fix by playing through Uncharted Drake's Fortune for the PS3. Uncharted might be about trying to recover a cursed statue, but we all know what the really important issue is here. Metal reward points. 
You want them, and we can tell you how to get them. Obtaining some of the medals involves, of course, finding treasures. These shiny valuables are hidden throughout the game. We're going to show you where the first five are to get you well along your way to becoming a first-rate treasure hunter. The first treasure along your path is the Mosaic Inca Earring. Follow the river up to a pile of rocks that's on your left before the waterfall. Easy enough. And this find nets you the first treasure medal as well. Next up is the Jeweled Silver Monkey. Make your way to the ruins and get up on a ledge. Hop out to the first pillar and then the pillar to your left. It should have a tree on it. Your precious little monkey will be waiting for you there. The third treasure is the decorated gold ring. You'll find this inside the ruins. You'll come to a chasm and before you cross it, look to your left. You'll see the one ring in the corner. The fourth treasure you can find is the silver llama. After you fill the temple chamber with water, swim through and pull yourself out. Head right and you'll be led to an alcove. Your llama will be on the ground. Number five is the Golden Inca Cup. After the cutscene of the scaffolding toppling, turn to your left until you see a breakable jar. The Golden Inca Cup will be right behind it on a horrifying bag of bones. Er, is that Amy Winehouse? So hard to tell these days. Nab the five we've shown you to receive the coveted Beginner Fortune Hunter Medal. Collect these and other medals and you'll be able to unlock a whole host of special features. Happy hunting! Be sure to check g4tv.com slash cheap for the latest tips and tricks. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to Adam. Thank you, Kristen. Well, while Drake hasn't pulled in Master Chief's numbers, Uncharted is still a solid hit for Sony. In today's X-List, we find out who are the current reigning champs of PS3 sales. Number five is Assassin's Creed. Despite some initial glitches, it had gamers get out their pitchforks and torches. The title is still selling strong. And number four is Uncharted, which proves that you don't need enormous breasts and a British accent to make treasure hunting fun. And number three is Devil May Cry 4, which racked up a lot of pre-orders, despite the fact that many crybabies swore they'd never buy this game if it went multi-platform. Right ahead of that is Call of Duty 4, which I hear is deeper and harder than its predecessors. And at number one is Warhawk. Mind you, this is the retail version and not taking online sales into consideration. If you have a PlayStation 3, this is where the action is, or, you know, people really need a Bluetooth headset. All right, coming up later on X-Play, we have an exclusive preview of the U.S. version of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Not the important stuff you're seeing on the net. But first, let's take a look at the leaderboards for everyone's favorite hypnotic rail shooter, Res HD. isn't everything. Image tags count as well. Indie Games begins in 60 seconds. And call now. There's a lot of speculation circulating over the web that Bungie's game Marathon is actually the sequel to Halo 3 and that they're going to be recreating it for the Xbox 360. All right, welcome back to X-Play and thanks for your question, Paul. Um, they're not going to recreate <laughs> Marathon for the Xbox 360 as a sequel to Halo. They are slightly tied in because they have elements in, you know, that, that are connected, but they're it's not similar the names, same thing. That exactly. kind of thing. Right. Um, but you can, of course, get Marathon on Xbox Live Arcade. It's the old Mac version. Don't download it. It's uh, it'll going to make you nauseous. It will it'll make you vomit. Really, really will make you sick. And yeah, once again, they're not going to remake that game as Halo 4. Okay. <laughs> for more on rumors, hot button issues, or whatever else is on my mind, check out the Sessler Soapbox. You'll find it exclusively online at g4tv.com slash soapbox. There's a new one every Wednesday because I get really agitated during the middle of a work week. Let's face it, America's current political arena is just monkey business. Forget about the nine trillion in debt. No one's asking the important questions here. Like, who would win in a fight between a sloth and a hippo? Well, thankfully, the Patriots at Gamecock and Wide Load Games are tackling the issues head on. We went on location to check out Hail to the Chimp and see the real fruits of democracy.
No one is going to bring a cat into a voting booth to help them pick out our next president. Why? Number one, cats generally vote for the always unpopular anarchist candidates. And two, because humans are closed-minded. Thankfully, animals aren't. And soon we'll have a chance to participate in their political process in Hail to the Chimp for the PS3 and Xbox 360. We got the lowdown on animal politics with one of the game's producers. So in Hail to the Chimp, the lion has been dethroned and uh, the monarchy has fallen. So things have sort of descended into a bit of chaos uh, and they've decided to switch over from a monarchy to a republic. So as a player, you pick your favorite candidate and set off on the campaign trail. Unlike our current presidential race, there's at least one candidate in this race who appears to be a clear front runner. Crackers the Chimp, he's the front runner in a way because he is the heir. He's the only one with real political experience. This Chimp is for change, and that's what's gonna come about if you vote for Crackers. The front runner in a way because he is the heir. That just makes him the candidate to beat. So everybody has their sights on him. It's hard out here for a chimp. Sure, their process is a little different than ours, but Hail to the Chimp has a decidedly human political spin. Just like in any other party game, it's not always good to be on top early because then everyone else will team up against you. All of those fears can be, I'm just gonna stomp on them right now. That's me stomping. Publisher Gamecock and developer Wideload are also doing their part to make sure gamers don't let this year's election sneak by them. So the Cock the Vote uh, campaign is a site that we're promoting where anyone can go and register online to vote. As far as getting people out to the polls, candidate Crackers had this to say. Everybody will be represented by me and I'll give everyone a laptop. Despite the PETA lobbyists, check out Hail to the Chimp later this year. Up next on X-Play, we go inside Nintendo for an exclusive look at one of the year's most wanted games, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. The characters, the stages, the secrets, all will be revealed. Don't go anywhere. X-Play, one of iTunes' best podcasts of 2007. Video games are evolving, and now, so are we. Introducing X-Play, next, only on G4. Welcome back to X-Play. The Wii promises fun for everyone, but if your idea of fun isn't spotting me's on an escalator, then check out this exclusive preview. We're continuing our coverage on one of the most long-awaited Nintendo games ever, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Ready? As we get closer to the release date, new information keeps emerging about this highly anticipated fighter. For the whole story, we went to the game's localization producer, Nate Bildor. What's different in Brawl and what's better in Brawl? Um, every mode you can think of, and then more modes on top of that. The stages have been expanded. But on top of that, there's some really, really specific modes that have really been beefed up. Um, one of the, the most important was adventure mode. According to Bildorf, the revamped adventure mode will be a full-fledged romp through the Nintendo universe and a major improvement over Melee's. The adventure mode in this game is really something really special, and it's basically a game in and of itself. It's a really long adventure where you are going to start with a certain couple characters and then play through a really long and involved story meeting all the other characters in the game. Of course, the most exciting addition to the game may be the ability to finally go online with your brawlers. And the multiplayer options are just as varied. And you can do several different modes, you know, everything multiplayer, stages, switching items, all that stuff. You set up whatever game you want. Um, you can also do uh, team battle, co-op home run contests online. One of the things we're most excited about is the brand spanking new stage editor mode, which lets you create levels from the ground up. You basically have a bunch of puzzle pieces that you can use and you can stick a plank down here and then some springs over here and maybe angled walls over here or you want a tree in the middle. You know, there are different sets that you can put up. The best part about it is you're kind of fiddling around and you're putting all these pieces here and oh, this looks kind of cool. And then you just hit the start button and you pop right into it. As if that weren't cool enough, you can actually save your custom levels to your SD card and take them to a friend's house later on. But don't worry, Nintendo files. There are still plenty of nostalgia-laden levels to play on. 
From the small town of Animal Crossing, to the famous foliage of the Pikmin universe, to the abstract imagery of WarioWare. There are also plenty of unlockable characters, but we can't reveal those just yet. Even with all these options, some classics just can't be beat. Unless, of course, you're Link. The winner is... For those of you who are LTTP, it's time for a refresher. Here is our X-Play replay. Today we reviewed the long-awaited Lost Odyssey. The game looks great, sounds great, but we've seen it all before. While Sakaguchi may have given birth to the Final Fantasy universe, that doesn't quite excuse using the same mechanics after 20 years. Now the game is by no means a failure, but we want more innovation. All right, well, we're just about done for today, but join us tomorrow for another all-new X-Play at 8 p.m. On tomorrow's show, we're back with more Super Smash Bros. action, and we'll check out some of the new faces in the series. Then Mr. Sark sounds the call of duty with another gamer challenge for all you Modern Warfare fans out there. Plus, we go head to head to figure out why Japanese games like Devil May Cry 4 aren't bringing anything new to the table. Former GameSpot editorial director Jeff Gertzman will be joining us. It is a discussion you'll need to hear to believe. And you're going to want to stick around if you want to see the world's wildest, most amazing TV around. It is Duty Free TV, G4's new nightly block of totally foreign shows. Don't change the channel because it's up next. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.